Well, hi, it's Jerry with I Love RV Life. And I mentioned several months ago that we were going to make an addition to our Montana to make our workflow much, much better. Today's the day. This is a Synology Disk Station 118. This is the most amazing product I've ever seen for small offices. I can't wait to show it to you. Hi, it's Jerry, and today I'm going to be making a leap, uh, quite a substantial leap, into uh, improving our workflow on the road. Now, before I start showing you things and pieces and parts, this isn't just for workflow if you have you know, a job where you're out on the road and you've got to be able to combine your data storage. I'm going to put a link right here of a video I did a, a while back showing my portable office using laptop and just, uh, just the very, very basics of what I've got to be able to do. And then all these hard drives that I have to carry around to be able to back up I Love RV Life. That's very important. And then another hard drive that I have all my projects for my business. That's very, very important. And then I've got another Pelican case with more hard drives in it. I know this is getting out of control, isn't it? That I'm having to back up the backup because if you lose one drive, I'll lose it all. And, and I can't afford that. I only have so much storage that I can put on this laptop and I have multiple terabytes of data that I have to be able to keep. Now, that's work. That's work. But I'm also going to show you how you can use this for entertainment and you can also use it for homeschool if you're keeping all your data and packets and information, things that you're purchasing um, and you need a place to be able to store that and it's convenient for multiple laptops or various devices that you're using out there, this is going to be ideal. This is a Synology Disk Station 118. Now, Synology makes a number of these devices from single drive, two drive redundant, all the way up to multiple, multiple drives. Um, I also own a two drive that I keep in my home uh, that has RAID built into it, but I didn't need that for travel. What I'm going to be using here is a single drive to be able to get all my primary data stored into one location. It will sync with a small portable drive that's going to be multiple terabytes using a USB 3 that I can back up, say, on a weekly basis or a daily basis, depending on how much work I'm going to be doing. Now, I'm also going to be showing you not how to configure everything. I'm going to give you a peek. It's, it's, it's so easy to set these up that I don't have to sit here and take you through pieces and parts. It's intuitive. You start with A and it guides you through each individual part. It is so, so simple. How to be able to create a volume is very, very simple. Just these types of things so that it shows up on your desktop and then you've got this big, massive device that you can use for gaining access to your data that can be universal for things like your Roku for Plex, or let's say that you've got multiple parties working inside the RV with multiple laptops or desktop PCs. Everybody can gain access to their data without having to find another hard drive, another portable, and hopefully you don't drop it and damage it. One central location to be able to place this. Now, before I show you how simple it is to be able to assemble one of these, <laughs> you're just not going to believe it. Let me do mention one thing. This is AC powered, so you will have to have AC power for it. The nice thing about this device is as you travel, many people get all wigged out about carrying these data devices and you have all these crazy ways that you have to be able to turn it on and turn it off. It has a power button and when you get ready to leave and unhook and go to your next destination, you hit the power button till it beeps, let go of it. It does an automatic shutdown, so it doesn't harm any of your data. When you get to your destination and you have power again, you press the button, boom, it works again. I mean, it's just that simple. Then as you'll also notice right here, you have a ethernet connection. Now, one of the things that you've got to have with this device, it is not wireless. So you do have to have some form of router to be able to use within your RV so that everybody on the Wi-Fi network can gain access to this. So if you're just using one of these little hockey pucks that are out there for your connection for Wi-Fi, 
this is not going to be a solution for you. And I know that some of the more advanced ones now have an Ethernet port in them. You can use this in those types of configurations. Or if you're using something like I have installed here, I'm using a Cradle Point cellular router. It has four ports on the back of it. And Cradle Point is not the only. Cradle Point's my preference. That's what I like using. But there's other types of cellular routers that you can purchase out there that if you're interested in another brand you can consider those as well as long as they have ethernet ports in the back of it and it is a true router this Synology or the lower end units or the higher end units will work in this type of configuration what I like about the 118 and why I chose this there's other single drive units if you go out there and look on Synology's website you'll find white models that are like low, low, low end, but they still work and can handle your specific needs. I mean, you can find one for under $100 plus your hard drive. This one's a little bit more than this. This is a quad core processor. So again, I've mentioned in the past, time is money for me. So I wanna be able to move data up quickly to the device, move data down quickly to the device, and I don't wanna be sitting there waiting for periods of time and I know you think oh okay well instead of it taking you two minutes it might take you seven or eight minutes if you add that up throughout the day that can be hour or more and uh, time is money time is money for me it's, it's time for money with my clients it's time of money for me to get the task done and go out and play with Joan so uh, all that adds up as well so I'm going to show you quickly how easy it is to be able to assemble this then we're going to bring up the laptop and I'm going to give you a screen view and we'll show you how easy it is to be able to operate this. I'm not going to take you through all the setup features. You can go out to the Synology website and it's one, two, three, four, and you can set these things up. It is easy breezy. And then once you do that, you can see how this functions. You're going to be amazed, amazed at how it will improve your workflow, your homeschooling, or if you get like a Roku device, and there's others that can use it as well. And you put your um, ripped DVDs, you know, I've got a collection of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds I've ripped. You could put those on here as well. I'll show it to you. It's gonna blow your mind, it's awesome. Okay, here's the front of the unit. Um, you can see that it's got uh, the power button that is located here. And then you have three little LEDs. One shows you uh, disk access, that should be green. Uh, when it is accessing the disk, uh, this is the LAN access. So when you're accessing data, it will flicker and blink. And then the status says whether uh, it is in uh, active use green or it can go yellow if, it's, if you set this up for the hard drive to say go to sleep. I'm going to set mine up for the hard drive to shut off after an hour. I think the fault is 20 minutes. And, um, and then th that's just for power consumption, but it's a very, very simple unit. Again, showing you the back of it here. Um, you can see that it's got a fan located here. It's a very, very quiet unit. Uh, I talked about, here's the power jack that comes with it, two USB three ports, and then the ethernet connection that will go here as well. It comes with, um, you know, your standard uh, Cat5 cable uh, to use, and then it comes uh, in a power, with a power brick, a little small power brick. Uh, and then if you're located, you know, in Europe and you're looking at this, it provides you with a connector based on the country that you're at. So this, this little connector snaps on for your power brick. All right, so it opens up pretty simple. Um, just literally slip the case off like so. Um, and this is where the hard drive will go. They provide you with a a handful of these little small screws that you can see here that are universal both for the hard drive and then uh, assembling the case here. I am going to be using a Seagate Iron Wolf uh, drive. Uh, again, I'll provide Amazon links for all this. You can use just about any kind of a NAS drive. I'm a big fan of these Iron Wolf Seagates. Uh, I've been using them in NASes for a long time and they last a long time. Yeah, I know you're going to see somebody who's disgruntled. Once in a while, you'll get one that's bad, but that's with any, any hard drive. But um, I have yet to find one that's bad. And you'll notice it's got ears here for screwing things in and then a jack uh, for the drive to be able to go into. This is how easy it is to assemble this unit. I put a hand here, give it a good snug fit. 
and then I'm going to take my screws and secure this in place. And you don't have to get overly crazy uh, to be able. And this, this is all it takes to assemble this unit. One Phillips head screwdriver. Isn't that crazy? It's just that simple. Okay, that took about two minutes to uh, put the hard drive in. That's all you have to do. And now I'm going to put the cover back on it. slips in place just like that. Nice tight fit. And then if you'll notice back here on the back, there's two screws back here to install. I use the same screws as the hard drives. And this will make sure that the cover stays on with no trouble. This, pl this case is plastic, but I am screwing into the metal of the case below. You don't have to get overly crazy, but you do want these screws nice and snug so they don't vibrate out when you're traveling in the RV. Now then, how am I gonna mount this up in my cabinet? I'll show you that, uh, but I have these uh, plastic feet that are on here. Uh, I'm not gonna bother taking those off, uh, but I'm gonna mount this with Velcro command strips. Let me show you those. We're gonna use these Velcro command strips. Um, I love these things. Uh, we use them to hang pictures here. Um, I find it best just to take them and pre-stick them. I'm just going to stick them on the feet here. I'm not worried about it being too pretty. This is going to be out of sight, out of mind. And uh, the trick to these, you hold them down for 30 seconds. And now for this last one, I took a little bit of Gorilla Tape and built it up here just so I can get it tall enough to where front and back this will stay in one place. Stick that here real quick and then we'll go ahead and mount it up in the cabinet. All right, I'm gonna connect this to the back of the router real quick. Get that done. And we'll feed it here through the hole. Pull the cat cable down through the wall here, and we'll plug it in. There we go. And then before I stick this Synology in here, I'm going to make sure I can put it right about here. I'm going to leave a little bit of space here where I can reach my finger in and power it off and power it down. I think something like about that should do. And then I'm gonna leave me about three fingers, about three fingers of space here on the side. Um, this Synology, you have this on both sides if you can make this out, I know it's a little bit dark. But uh, this Synology um, logo here is actually a vent and you have one of those on both sides. So you wanna make sure you can get good airflow in here. Okay, I can power that up with no problem. All right, we'll hook up the Ethernet cable here. Hook up the power here. And then I've already pulled the backings off the command strips. And we will stick this one time. Boom, there we go. And just hold it for about 30 seconds to give it a good firm stick. Now, so you're probably wondering, Jerry, is this gonna really stay with all the violent movement? And you gotta hold this thing down for about 30 seconds. Is it gonna stay? <laughs> well, I hope it does. Uh, but I'm gonna put a video right, right here on the Sumo Springs. Uh, if you haven't seen that, again, that's not an affiliate. They did provide those Sumo Springs to me to try out, but I don't get any affiliate marketing with Sumo Springs. I am just a huge, massive fan. And uh, you'll see the at the very end, watch it to the end now, bear with me as you see me install them. Uh, on the very, very end, you'll see where um, I do the glass of water test. And look, I have received so many comments from so many different people who said, I've put those on the camper, on our camper, on our RV, on our fifth wheel. I can't believe what a huge improvement it made. So I'm hoping between 
these strips and the sumo springs that I'm not going to have any problems whatsoever. Okay, I'm going to give you some tie wraps and kind of tidy this up a bit so I just don't have stuff all over the place. And uh, we'll power this unit up and then I'm going to show you what it looks like from a desktop environment and how you can use it. This is going to be exciting. All right, we've powered it up. I hear the disc spinning up. It's going to go through several little gyrations here. And I hear it making noise. So it's going to kind of come up in this initial configuration and then we have some minor setup to do uh, before we start seeing the system completely boot up. And it just established the LAN connection. And that beep is it booting up from the disk in the initial setup. So now let's go set it up real quick. Before I get started, I'll just cover one thing. Um, you will use a app that you will download called Synology Assistant. Uh, and using Synology Assistant, uh, you will click on that um, and it will show the IP address and the device. And uh, you'll click on that and you'll, it'll ask you for three pieces of information. Uh, naming the router, naming the Synology NAS, giving yourself an administrative username, and giving yourself a password. And then once that has been done, uh, you can use, a, uh, a, use the access to the system to be able to start your configuration. I have already done that for security reasons. I'm not going to show it because um, if I do show that, then anyone from anywhere in the world uh, can get access to my NAS. So I'm not even going to show my username. So forgive me for that. It's going to be uh, blocked out. So let's go ahead and gain access to the system. So I'm gonna put in the name of the system. Uh, I'll just show you a couple things that you can look at when you go to set up your system. Here is the control panel, if you'll notice this right here. And just to set this up for a basic NAS, um, we will go to shared folder. And I have created a share folder here and then I have set up a Plex Media Server folder. So it's just simply uh, you create, click create, uh, click it, give it a name, and you have a shared folder that can be used as a NAS. And I'll just show you how easy it is to be able to see something like this in just a moment. Now, once that has been done, I call my main one here Big Drive, and you can see, um, you know, the, the, I can empty the recycle bin, I can, I can edit its uh, configuration, whether I want to have a recycle bin or not, you know, just like you would see on your PC. And you really don't have to do anything above and beyond that. You can choose to encrypt it, encrypt it if you want to. It will slow the access down a bit, but then you have a specific key that only you can gain access to that drive. So uh, that's not that important to me. So I have not set that up. But that's how easy it is to be able to set up a shared folder. Now, once that is done, and in that just seconds of a configuration, you can now see that I can go to my file folder. I can go down here to a network, and we'll give that just a second. And there is my unit. And I can open this up and you can see all the different folders that I have opened up here. Here's I Love RV Life. You can see all my folders. You can see that I have lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of videos out here that I've had for quite some time. Okay, just to show you a few other things about the Synology NAS before we leave that. Um, one of the things that I would suggest that you do is set this up for remote access. It's very simple to be able to do. I click on the control panel again, go to external access, and here is your quick connect. You'll give it a quick connect ID. Again, I've got that blanked out. And you click apply, and once you do that, it will give you this address down below, your quick connect 
dot to and the name of your device and once you do that and put in your username and password uh, then you can gain access to it uh, but i would also strongly recommend that you put in the uh, two-factor authorization even if i did give you this uh, nobody could log into it without having my uh, my cell phone uh, with a secure connect connection that i have there but again just giving you extra capabilities to be able to protect your system. So it's literally, literally that simple. Now, let me show you one more application that I have here. Uh, this is, this is before I get to media server, uh, let me take you to the package center. Uh, these are all the packages that come with it. And uh, one of the packages that you do get with it um, is, is Plex. Uh, and you can use uh, Plex as I, as I will be showing you a little bit later, um, to be able to maintain all of your uh, ripped movies that you can play, put on this system. So if I was to go here to, I'll close this down, if I was to go here to File Station, and uh, currently I'm on the big drive. If you'll look here, I've got a folder that I created called Plex, and you can see that I have all my all my movies in here just tons and tons and tons of movies i'll just go through that quickly uh, that we can that we can look at um, so when i go into my plex media server so uh, clicking on that i've logged in i'm going to open up plex here take just a second to look open it up so here i am uh, logged into the system you can see some of the recent movies that we've looked at you can see movies that have been recently added recently played etc uh, if you want to see um, my entire library, uh, this is all the videos that uh, we've ripped off of DVDs that we purchased over the years and some of our favorite. We've got TV shows in here as well. Here, I'll show you something that you'll love. Uh, Joan is a huge fan of Little House on the Prairie. So we've got, if you'll notice, 190 ripped videos from the entire catalog of DVDs that I bought her. So just to show you how simple it is to set this up, I'm going to hit the gear knob here. Uh, I'm going to go down the libraries. You'll see I've got movies here. And then if I want to look at where they're located, uh, here's where you add the folder. And I don't want to click this because it'll make changes. But I'll just click here, add the address of the Synology server and boom, my videos will immediately start showing. And then uh, as those videos start showing, uh, you'll start getting this type of presentation here. So we'll go back here to home. It'll start downloading all the, it'll start downloading all the art that you're seeing here across the board. Um, and all the meta information. Uh, here's Joan's favorite coal miner's daughter. So you can you can click that, and it will give you you know the parties that are in there, when it was made, etc. 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 Show you the rating. This is a PG movie, etc. Um, and I could play it here on the desktop if I chose to do it. You can play it on an iPad, an iPhone, any of those things using the Plex app. You can view it directly off my server and get this it doesn't matter where i'm at in the world as long as i can see that server um, it could be you know again in the rv and we could be um, outside uh, we could be at a friend's house we could be at another um, another rv and we want to use our ipad or iphone and hook it up to a projector and show a movie uh, as long as i can get wi-fi uh, I can be able to do that. So it's, it's an amazing program, um, and, and I just absolutely love Plex. Again, I've been using it for a very long time. It's literally that simple. Um, just I'm running this in its absolute basic mode. I'm running it uh, as a file station is what they call it. It's a NAS uh, with all my folders that are located out here, and um, I have them where I can share them. And then you can do things that uh, to set this up, and I haven't done this yet, but I will be. You'll see the Synology Drive ShareSync. Um, and if you have another Synology somewhere located, say at a relative's house, a child's house, or something like that, uh, you could buy two of these and um, set it up to be able to back it up in the middle of the night so that you would never lose your data. It just I could just continue going on and on and on. 
It has all kinds of security services to be able to pa to protect it. Um, you've got where you can back up your Google Workspace if you choose to do that. None of this, it's just all part of the package. Um, the other thing you can do, you can set this up to back up your laptops automatically um, to where you don't have to do anything other than just use it and uh, you'll always know that you've got your files out there that are available. It's, it's just a phenomenal package. I just absolutely love it. Okay, let's uh, go back outside. I'm going to just show you quickly this Plex server and then we'll just close out the video. I've been using Plex for quite some time. I had it on a home server that I built years ago. And then a couple years ago, I went ahead and paid for a lifetime subscription. I'll leave you a link. They're not an affiliate. I'm just a big fan of Plex. Uh, but I added that to my Synology. Again, push button, click, put in your credentials, you're done. And I had ripped handfuls of DVDs over time and just brought them down into an MPEG-4 format. If you're familiar with that, there's a lot of different rippers out there that you can do that with. Uh, I use DVD Fab. Um, you can use Handbrake. Um, sometimes on Handbrake, you may be run into some copy protection. Uh, but with DVD Fab, I don't have any of that problem whatsoever. And you can, it's dvdfab.cu if you're interested in looking at that. And then we use Roku devices. Now, up in the bedroom, uh, we've got one of these little Rokus like that. Works great. Have no problem with it whatsoever. Uh, we can go to Plex, we can watch our movies. Everybody's happy. Uh, down here, if you can look, I'm not sure if it will show up down here at the bottom. Uh, we have right here a Roku sound bar um, that connects to the TV. And uh, here, I'll just turn it on real quick. We'll give that just a second to boot up. And here you'll see I've got many of the uh, popular, you know, apps that you can put on a Roku. Um, there's nothing unique about these. But here is Plex. And let me show you Plex. Um, it is really, really an interesting product. Very, very interesting product. And I'm going to take you over to our movie folder that I showed you earlier. And this is the thing I love about Plex. You, you put your video on there and you make sure you put the proper name to the video. So you'll see a lot of these have dates on them. Um, and there is a naming convention that you put on these. I, I typically use what they call the imdb.com naming convention just to make sure that I get it right. And once you load them up on here, guess what? It pulls down all your artwork uh, and it works like a champ. So if you were to look at something like this, it pulls down all your metadata that you see here. It, it gives you, you know, artist information it's just this is one of Joni's movies uh, she loves nine to five she's a dolly fan and then uh you know you it even pulls down a trailer so i can show you the trailer on this i think without any copyright issues and uh, we're using our cradle point router to pull this off the network and it takes just a second to be able to get this off the server 20th century fox presents a tribute so you can see this is an old, an older movie that's in the square format. The nice thing about Plex, you once you build your catalog here, you go, well, Jerry, you probably got a whole lot of videos. If you're looking at a, I got 175 on here. If you look at that number right there, you can go by alphabet and um, just move it down to whatever you want to be able to see. Um, Here's a, another movie. Here's Jurassic World. Let's look at that. That's an old one. We can play it from the beginning. And again, you saw all the metadata that's included in that. All this poster art, is, I don't have to do any of this. It pulls this right off the network. And once it loads it, you can see it. You can fast forward it to whatever you want to be able to do. And we'll just show just a couple seconds here. I'm just kind of giving you an idea how it works. Literally that simple to be able to use it. I'm pulling all this off the server. And uh, it just works absolutely great. This is a great way to be able to watch your video catalog while you're out there. So, 
When you say you want to sponsor an attraction? So that's one item. And then the other thing that I can show you here is if you want to watch uh, something called live TV, then you can go out here and look at something called Plex channels. And these are free. Um, just tons of channels that you get from Plex that cost nothing. Um, now you get what you pay for, right? But there are just, I don't know how many channels are out here, but uh, you can get everything from news to Ted to um, your favorite old kung fu movie, uh, current data, home fix it shows. Uh, it just goes on and on and on. Just tons and tons of flex channels that you can get out here. And then you can uh, go out here and look at them by, you know, entertainment, movies, reality, news and opinion. You know, you can, you can, kids and family, you know, you can narrow down your selections and just get all your kids stuff to keep them entertained. So there's just, you know, tons and tons, tons of things out here to be able to use with Plex. So this is another fantastic addition for running a Plex server on this. And then Plex is relatively inexpensive for a lifetime. You can get it for a month or you can get it, there's a free version, or I would just say spend a couple extra dollars if you plan on using this and just go ahead and get a lifetime and be done with it. I'm very happy with this Synology uh, 118, this DS-118. Again, single disk unit. Uh, it can be backed up using an external drive if you choose to do that. And if that's all you've got, uh, then it's a, a perfectly reasonable way to be able to do that. You know, put yourself on a, a one-week backup schedule or something like this. I, I, I will mention that uh, we have a two-disk unit, uh, a 220 plus in our home, uh, that has been operating for a year and a half now and has never been turned off and I've never had one single issue, one single failure. It's just absolutely an excellent product. Purchase it in a number of locations. I'll provide you with some links uh, in the description of today's video. You can also go out to ilovervlife.com um, and uh, get a little bit more details in the blog of the various models that are out there if you want to go with something a little bit larger, a little bit more elaborate, or if you want to go with one of the more economy solutions, still a very good device, just as you reduce the dollar amount, so do you reduce your speed and your performance. Uh, and you may not be able to get Plex to work as well. I would say if you're going to run Plex, uh, I would start, start at the 118. And of course, if you move up from there, you won't have any problems whatsoever. It's just the amount of transcoding that has to go on in the videos to make sure that you can get those out and about to whatever device you're using. Laptops, phones, iPads, my favorite, the Roku, uh, all work absolutely flawlessly. I've never had a single issue with that uh, in the amount of time that I've been using both Plex and being able to use Synology. Perfect application for work. Um, workflow, absolutely perfect for that. Homeschool, perfect for that. And then for entertainment as well, uh, I think it's a, a high value. If you're going to combine all those together, it's very easy to be able to justify putting in a device like this. Again, let me recap just a couple things real quickly. It is a 120 volt AC product if you're here in the States or in Canada. Um, if you're watching this from overseas, as many of our videos are watched, uh, if you order the Synology, it will provide you with the proper brick for the country that you're in so that you can power it as well. So again, if you're caravanning in Europe and you need something like this for work, uh, that will work good. And of course, if you're RVing in the States, um, then this works as well. So again, it is an AC unit. If you're boondocking, you'll have to have some type of an inverter source. Uh, I would strongly recommend you use full sine wave. Don't use one of the cheapy, cheapy, cheapies. It doesn't do well with computers, uh, and that'll work for you as well. And then the last item I just want to stress as well, you will need a router either if you're using this for cellular services um, and you're needing something like that, then you will need one of these cellular routers and even some of the hockey puck style, the expensive, more expensive hockey puck styles uh, do have a single network interface as well. So I'm seeing more and more of that. Once you look at the price performance of that, you can either go with 
a cradle point or one of the lesser expensive, less fully featured units that are available out there. Well, I hope from a work perspective, uh, you have found this helpful. If you have stayed to the end of the video, there will be a playlist to where uh, I am showing things to help you as you work on the road from your RV, and I hope you find that helpful if you have not seen that series in the past of how I set up the office. I'll even take you to some older videos uh, that I had in our gateway to where I created uh, back in that corner right there. Uh, custom desk and dual monitors if you're using a standalone PC and you're needing more high performance things. Although I will tell you, my Lenovo gaming laptop is a beast. So I can render and do anything I want with it. Very, very pleased with that setup. Hope you found this helpful. Go out to ilovervlife.com and look at all the different videos and blogs that we have out there. If you like it, thumbs up. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. I love doing these types of things to help you while you're traveling out on the road just as much as I love RV life. Mm -hmm.